you were already in great shape, but then when you came back to WWE, you were in insane shape and you still are. Okay. Was there a day where you were like, I'm going to really turn it up in the gym now? Yep. I don't so much turn up in the gym. I always worked out hard. Uh, more like diet wise is such a difference maker for me. Um, I have such a high metabolism, not as high as it used to be, but still really high. And uh, the key was breaking my neck initially. Um, that kind of helped me in a lot of well, ways. Yeah, yeah, people <laughs> ask me for advice. I was like, you know, it really was a turning point in my life. Breaking my neck. Getting fired and breaking my neck. Those two things I recommend for you to <laughs> truly find your potential. Uh, but yeah, I broke my neck in um, Newcastle, England uh, in 2016, I believe it was. And uh, luckily it was a non-displaced fracture. Um, and I just had to take some time off, like eight weeks. I think I fully took off and maybe did some promos for Evolve during that time. Um, but I got very lucky, but had some time at home for the first time ever. That came straight from uni to WWE schedule to the independent schedule, which was even busier than WWE schedule. And during that eight weeks, this where not only did the message have the conversation of, if you don't get your act together, you're going to crash and burn for one, I was like, well, I'm the most successful independent wrestler in the world. What more can I do? And she was like, you know, there's more you can do. Basically, WWE, that's where you should be mm-hmm. on top. But also, I'm going to leave your arse if you don't get yourself together outside the ring. And that's where I really was like, okay, this is not who I want to be. I can do more. I do want to be back there. I do want to be world champion. The goal was to headline WrestleManias. I'm proud of what I'm doing right now. But okay, what are we going to do? We're going to cut back on the, the partying, or at least for a period, eliminate it. And we're going to start looking at areas that can improve. Like, who's the top billing in WWE right now? And at the time, I was looking at, like, a Brock Lesnar and a Paul Heyman. I went, okay, that's the top attraction right now. If I stand in front of Brock, am I believable? More than a lot of people, but no, I can do better than that. Mm. I'm going to build my body up to look the part. If I step in front of Brock, people are going to go, I believe he can beat him up. Mm. If i got to go toe-to-toe with Heyman on the mic, as much as I'm comfortable right now on the mic, i got to get better. And I'd ask for more promos and shows after that. So it was... Eating like a maniac when I returned from that neck injury. I was talking as much as I possibly could. And you fast forward a few years where I eliminated Brock from the Rumble. The next day on Raw, I remember Ricochet saying, um, well, that's pretty cool. When I looked at a graphic on the screen, and it was Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar with an image of Heyman. And I was like, wow, that's the motivation I used when I broke my neck. So, yeah, everybody out there, get fire, break your neck. <laughs> next Drew McIntyre. <laughs> I like that you said your goal was... Oh, you'll be in a movie, too. 